Hmm, so many delicious options. What kind of cookies are you in the mood for, Maya? Remember, these are for the bake sale at school. Oh man, the decision is tough. Chocolate chip classics are always a crowd pleaser, but those peanut butter swirl cookies look amazing too. True, those swirls are hypnotizing. I do love a good peanut butter cookie, but maybe we should go for something a little more unique. You know, something that'll really stand out on the bake sale table? Totally. Have you seen any recipes for those oatmeal raisin cookies with white chocolate chips? I saw a picture online that looked incredible. Now that you mention it, I think I remember seeing a variation of that in Grandma's old cookbook. Here it is. Grandma's prize winning oatmeal raisin white chocolate cookies. Let's go to the kitchen. True, my girl. Those swirls. Okay. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Two and a quarter cups of rolled oats, one and a half cups of all purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a half teaspoon of salt. Phew, that's a lot of dry ingredients. No kidding. We'll need to write this all down so we don't miss anything. Okay, dry ingredients are covered. What's next? Now for the wet stuff. One cup of softened butter, one cup of packed light brown sugar, one cup of granulated white sugar. Whoa, that's a lot of sugar. Well, it is a cookie recipe. What about eggs? Two large eggs, yep. And then the fun part, the mix-ins. One and a half cups of raisins and a cup of white chocolate chips. Imagine the combination of those textures, chewy raisins and creamy white chocolate. My taste buds are already doing a happy dance. Anything else? Just a little bit of vanilla extract, one teaspoon, to add a touch of warmth. Sounds perfect. Okay, so we basically have everything except for the white chocolate chips. We can easily grab those at the store on the way home from school. Great thinking. Now, let's make sure we have all the necessary tools. We'll need a large mixing bowl for the dry ingredients, another one for the wet, an electric mixer for creaming the butter and sugar, measuring cups, and spoons for all those precise quantities. Don't forget the trusty oven mitts. We wouldn't want any burnt fingers when taking the cookies out and maybe a spatula for scraping the batter out of the bowls? Excellent point. Okay, looks like we're all set up. Now, the most important part, who gets to do what? I can definitely handle measuring all the dry ingredients. I love the satisfaction of pouring things into perfect little cups. Perfect. You're the measuring master. I'll take care of creaming the butter and sugar with the mixer. That can be a bit of an arm workout sometimes. Don't worry, I can be your assistant muscle if you need a break. Thanks, Maya. Then, we can combine the wet and dry ingredients together, and you can be in charge of adding those delicious raisins and white chocolate chips. Deal. This is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see the look on everyone's faces when they bite into these cookies. Me neither. All right, let's get this baking party started. First things first, preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Consider it done. Operation Prize-Winning Cookies is officially underway. Phew, that was a baking marathon. How are your arms feeling, Maya? Mixing all those ingredients can be quite the workout. Don't even get me started. My biceps are feeling seriously toned after all that scooping and stirring. But hey, at least we burned off some calories before we devour a mountain of cookies, right? Exactly. Speaking of devouring, those cookies are looking positively golden brown and delicious. Just a few more minutes in the oven and then, 
Drum roll, please. Taste testing time. Oh, I can't wait. The smell alone is enough to make my stomach growl. Remember how nervous we were about adding white chocolate chips? We weren't sure if it would work with the raisins. I admit, it was a bit of a gamble. But sometimes, the best things in life come from taking a leap of faith, right? And let's be honest, who can resist the creamy sweetness of white chocolate? Exactly. It's like a little burst of sunshine in every bite. Plus, the contrast with the chewy raisins is going to be incredible. I can already tell these cookies are going to be a showstopper at the bake sale. I have a good feeling about them too. It's always so rewarding to take a recipe, follow the steps, and create something delicious from scratch. It feels almost magical, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It's like a science experiment meets culinary artistry. You have all these different ingredients, each with their own unique properties, and then you combine them in a specific way to create something entirely new. And it's not just about the end product, although that's definitely a perk. There's something so therapeutic about the entire process. The rhythmic sound of the mixer, the satisfying feeling of dough squishing between your fingers, the anticipation of watching those cookies rise in the oven. I know exactly what you mean. It's almost like a form of meditation. You get so focused on the task at hand, all your worries and stresses fade away, and you're completely present in the moment. Exactly. And then, of course, there's the element of teamwork. Remember when we were arguing about who got to crack the eggs? How could I forget? You insisted on being the egg-cracking pro, while I demanded the prestigious role of chocolate chip dispenser. Ah, yes, the great chocolate chip debate. But hey, in the end, we worked it out, didn't we? It was a good reminder that even siblings can work together to create something fantastic. Hey, who are you calling a sibling? You're basically my baking partner in crime now. Deal. Maybe we can make this a regular thing. Family Diaries, Baking Adventures with Sarah and Maya. How does that sound? Love it. We can conquer all sorts of recipes together. Next time, maybe we try those macarons you've been eyeing online? They look like a challenge, but hey, that's half the fun. Macarons, huh? Now you're talking. They might be tricky, but with our combined powers of measuring, mixing, and maybe a sprinkle of good luck, who knows what we can achieve. A timer on the oven buzzes loudly, interrupting their conversation. Oh my gosh, that must be the cookies. Time to unleash the taste testers. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's just hope we don't devour the entire batch before the bake sale. Hey, Alex. You look a bit tense. Everything okay? Hey, Dad. I'm just really nervous. I have a job interview tomorrow, and I can't stop thinking about it. What if I mess up? It's perfectly normal to feel nervous before an interview. But remember you've prepared well and you're capable. You'll do great. I hope so. I've been going over my resume and practicing answers to common questions but I still feel like I might mess up. What if they ask something I don't know? You know, Alex, it's okay not to have all the answers. Interviewers understand that. They're looking for your ability to think on your feet and how you handle unexpected questions. Just be honest and show your enthusiasm for the role. I guess you're right. But I can't help but think about all the things that could go wrong. What if I blank out or get tongue-tied? I've had my fair share of interviews, and trust me, everyone has those fears. Do you want to hear a story about one of my interviews? Sure, Dad. It might help take my mind off things. 
All right. This was a few years ago, back when I was interviewing for a customer service manager position. I was just as nervous as you are now. I prepared and prepared, but on the day of the interview, I walked into the room and completely blanked out on one of the simplest questions. Really? What did you do? I took a deep breath, admitted that I was nervous, and asked for a moment to gather my thoughts. The interviewers appreciated my honesty and gave me a moment. I composed myself and answered the question to the best of my ability. It wasn't perfect, but it showed them I could handle pressure. That's good to know. I always feel like I have to be perfect in interviews. Perfection isn't the goal. They want to see who you are and how you handle situations. Remember, they're interviewing you because they're interested in you. You've got this, Alex. Just be yourself. Thanks, Dad. That makes me feel a bit better. Good. You know, dealing with problems and challenges is a part of life. Whether it's at work or in personal life, it's how we handle those problems that define us. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it just feels overwhelming, especially when you're trying to start a career. I understand. Starting out is always tough. But remember, every problem has a solution. It's just a matter of finding it. And you're not alone in this. You have us, your family, to support you. Thanks, Dad. That means a lot. I just want to do well and make you all proud. We're already proud of you, Alex. Just taking the step to apply and go for an interview is something to be proud of. You're doing great. Thanks, Dad. I'll try to keep that in mind. You know, when it comes to problems at work, you'll always face challenges. But every challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow. Take it one step at a time. What kind of problems did you face when you started your job? Oh, there were plenty. From dealing with difficult customers to managing tight deadlines. But each problem taught me something valuable. Like how to stay calm under pressure or how to communicate effectively with my team. How do you stay calm under pressure? I feel like I always get flustered. It takes practice. One thing that helps is to take deep breaths and focus on the present moment. Don't let your mind run away with worries about what might happen. Handle what's in front of you calmly and methodically. That makes sense. I'll try to remember that tomorrow. Good. And remember, it's okay to make mistakes. Everyone does. What's important is how you recover and learn from them. Thanks, Dad. I feel a lot better after talking to you. Anytime, son. I'm always here for you. And just think, tomorrow is an adventure. It's a chance to show them who you are and what you can do. You're right. I'll do my best and see it as a new experience. That's the spirit. And no matter what happens, we'll be here to support you. I'm proud of you, Alex, for taking this step. You've got this. And as David and Alex settle in for a game of chess, the warmth of their bond fills the room. Join us in the next episode to follow Alex on his adventure at the job interview. Will he conquer his nerves and impress the interviewers? Stay tuned to find out.